Hello everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Give me just a second. I'm going to pull up this video. I'm really hoping today that we get to do the live chat. Yesterday, the live chat on my live stream was not working. It worked for a little bit and then it stopped and it stopped for everybody. So I was really disappointed. Uh, these videos during this season that we're all going through uh, is really meant to be a social hour. We're going to sew a quilt block together. Today we're doing the churn dash block. But during this season that we all find ourselves in, our, my main purpose in these videos is to spend time with you to uh, hopefully be a happy distraction in your day, to have something to look forward to during our time of social distancing, right? And uh, one of the things about seasons, they're constantly changing. So we find ourselves in this season right now. We're going to make the best of it and spend some time together each day doing a traditional quilt block. We all know that the seasons change, right? So that's one of the good things that we can keep our minds set on is this is not forever. We will sooner than later, hopefully, get back to doing our normal daily routine. But in this time, we're going to spend some time together. That's really what these videos are all about. And we're going to learn something. Today, I've never done the churn dash block. I've never done it. Hello, Vicki. Hi, Linda. Hi, Darlene and Cindy and Speed Stitch 13. Hello. So far, our live chat is working. I hope that it continues working. I hope that today I don't mess up my blocks like I did yesterday. I hope that ha I hope <laughs> I hope I sew everything right together today. We'll see, but today's block is super easy. I had never done a churn dash block before. It's a very traditional quilt block. I do not know who the original creator was. I do not know when this design came into existence in the quilting world, but uh, yes, it's a very traditional quilt block. Don, you have a book of traditional blocks. Yes, I do too. But thank you. If I run out of ideas, I know who to come to. Hello, Winchester, Virginia. You're not that far. Well, you're a few hours away from me, but we're in the same state. You're finishing up some UFOs. Yes, this is a good time to do that, right? A good time to do that. So, uh, hello. Hi, everybody. Yes, yesterday, at the end of yesterday's live stream, I shared with you what you see on the screen. These are the measurements and the piece counts for the churn dash block. I had never made one before. The previous three other blocks we've done in this series, I had made them before. But the churn dash, I had never made it before. So yesterday afternoon, I cut out two sets of everything and I went ahead and put one together and I'm going to show you what my, let's see, where, where's the screen? Where's the screen? Here's the screen. This is the one I put together yesterday just to make sure that all the measurements were right. I think it's so pretty. I fell in love with the churn dash block. So just uh, as my first question for today, have you done a churn dash block before? Yes or no? Um, yeah, we're going to start with that question today. Is this the first time you're making the churn dash block? I really loved it. If you are someone who is really new to quilting, this is easy cutting and easy piecing. It might look a little complicated, but it's super duper easy. And we're going to sew it together live in this video. And hopefully I don't spin my pieces around today. That's what we're shooting for. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. I'm just glad we get to spend some time together. Yes, it's so great to see everybody. 
So, uh, yes, this is my experimental piece. I'm going to put the measurements back on the screen here in just a second. Here are my pieces for today. So I'm going to do this block in a green and beige colorway with you today. Yes, so that's what we're doing in just a little bit. I'm so glad that these videos have been helpful for you. Even if you don't want to make the blocks, I hope that uh, at some point you can turn on the video and just be, uh, have a distraction in your day, a distraction away from the news and the noise and all the other things that are going on. Even if you're knee deep in finishing uh, UFOs and you need to take a break from that, just turn on the video or have me in the background playing and talking to you while you're working on your F UFOs. Teresa, I just want to thank you so much. I'm going to say this again. You know that you really don't have to do that. I appreciate that so much, and it makes me want to cry every time I see that. Thank you. Oh, goodness. I just got my voice straight, y'all. My allergies have been really kicking in. So my morning voice is just starting to go away and my allergies. And when I get choked up, my voice starts to go again. <laughs> So let me pull on the screen one more time the measurements for today. If you are at your cutting table with your fabrics, they're on the screen. At the end of today's video, I'm going to put on the screen the measurements for tomorrow's block. Tomorrow, what are we doing tomorrow? We're doing the double necktie, double necktie block. Tomorrow's block will be another 12-inch block. And Sunday, we're doing a six inch block. This is just a little preview, something to look forward to. We're gonna do this, yes, um, every day, which means Saturday and Sunday too. We're streaming our church online, so I'm really flexible now on Sundays too. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna do it every day. If you can't make it, I totally understand. And that's one of the beauties about doing the videos on YouTube is you can come back and watch them. And there is a playlist. I'm putting all of these videos in a playlist. So they'll go one by one, hopefully in the right order if I did the settings right. And uh, yes, and I'm numbering them and putting a finished picture of a block as the thumbnail. So when you go to my channel, you'll see what each one of the blocks are. Hopefully that makes it easy to find them. So yes, here's what we're doing today. Hello everybody. It's so great to see y'all. I've really come, okay, before we get started today, because I do want to jump into this. I cannot wait to get started. Before we start that, I just want to say I've really, it's today's video number four. I really come to grow to love this time with you. I think I wake up excited for it. And even though at doing it live and I mess up and everything, I'm still really excited about it. So I'm really glad we're able to do this. Yes. Hopefully the live chat will keep up and I can keep up with your comments. If you have a question, and I miss it, please know that uh, I'm not ignoring you. Okay, the, the comments go by so fast and it takes everything I have to focus on not messing up. So know that if I miss your question and you can stick around, ask it again. Sometimes putting it in all caps really does uh, help a lot too because then I can sort of focus on that. I do know that several of our watchers, several of my friends, they type in all caps. That's easier for them to see when they're typing. And I totally understand it. And I'm fine with that. But it does make it easier for me to see as we're going through. If I miss your question and you can stick around, feel free to put it back on the screen and hopefully I catch it. Yes, okay. So let's go ahead and get started for today. 
I'm going to take the measurements off the screen. And if, uh, if you missed it, go back to yesterday's video at the end and pause the screen and jot it down and come right back. I think that's an easy way. Renee, uh, well, because during this time, we don't know how long we're going to be shut in, right? I'm trying to stay as current, up to date every day on how much longer are we going to be shut, shut in, social distancing. Uh, we might end up making uh, eight blocks. We might end up doing this for 12 more days. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, two reasons why I'm doing these videos is to spend time to see some faces during our day besides the people that we live with uh, and to reach out for those who have been by themselves and cannot visit with friends and family. And the second reason is to teach about traditional quilt blocks. I'm hoping that we have enough to make a quilt out of them, but you can take any of the blocks that we've done and make a quilt all on their own with the individual blocks like the churn dash you can repeat this several times and make a quilt out of that. Uh, the block we did yesterday, the blocks and pinwheels, that would be really pretty uh, all on its own as a quilt. The other two are a little bit busy, right? And they're smaller blocks. Uh, I think they would make great filler blocks in a, like a sampler type of quilt. And that might be what I end up doing with all of these blocks during the series is putting it together as a sampler quilt. I have not decided on that yet. We're going to we're going to wait and see. <laughs> but today's block, you could take this block. I fell in love with it so much yesterday, making just the one that I already know I will be making a turn dash quilt coming up when I get the chance. A table runner is a great idea. Yes. Yeah, all the states are different, right, Vicki? Uh, I think we're going to do this for the majority of everybody. If the majority of us are shut in, we're going to do this. And I'm going to keep this up until the majority of us can go back to what we deem normal life, right? Going back to work and visiting with our friends and our family and when our grandkids can come over or go see our next door neighbor free. Let me wake up my iron and get that warming back up because it shut down. I'm going to take this one off the screen. Today, these are our pieces. I want to say right before we get started, you can sew these pieces together as a strip set, right? These are our two and a half by four and a half inch pieces. There's four lights and four darks. You could sew together a long strip, both pieces being two and a half inches wide, and then cut your segments four and a half inches from a strip set. You can most definitely do that. We're going really simple and really basic and I'm gonna keep it like this because maybe some of us are going through our scraps and we can't really piece together strip sets because we don't have pieces long enough. So I have them separated, but you can most definitely sew together a long strip set and then cut a four and a half inch chunk out of that and make that a unit. You can do that. So here are my light four and a half or two and a half by four and a half inch pieces in my dark ones. And then we have one square that is four and a half by four and a half. That's going to be the piece right in the middle of our block. Okay. And then we have two light squares and two dark squares and these measure four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. Now that measurement might be a little tricky if you're new to quilting and cutting and making half square triangles. 
So what I'm going to say about these pieces is you can make these squares bigger and then trim down and square up your half square triangles that we're going to make here in just a minute if you want to do that. I'm going, I, I like to live on the wild side, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, the quilting wild side. And I've cut these four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. We're going to make uh, some half square triangles from these four blocks here in just a second. I will not be trimming up and squaring up my half square triangles. I'm just going to be cutting off the dog ears when we get to that point. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with that first. Let's put uh, these pieces to the side and these pieces to the side. We're going to start with the four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. We're going to turn the two light squares over to the back side and we're going to take a straight, straight edge ruler and we're going to make one line from corner to corner right in the middle. Just like that. And just like this there we go this line is actually going to be lined up to the right side of our presser foot when we sew we're going to sew four seams with this we're going to sew quarter inch on this side and a quarter inch on that side we're going to do that with both of these so let's take our dark fabrics and lay those pretty side up We'll take our light fabrics and lay them right on top, pretty side down. We're going to have our marking on the top. I'm just going to throw a couple pins in this to keep those together. Y'all, I want you to know this is a socializing hour. So if you uh, have a conversation in the live chat, I am perfectly fine with that. I want you to know, even if it's off topic in these videos, I am fine with that. For many of us, this is going to be one of the few times that we get to socialize with someone outside of our house today. So y'all feel free to chat. If you're asking a question, know that I might miss it. I'm trying to focus my best on what we're doing so I don't make another goof up like yesterday. So here are our two blocks. We're going to take these to the sewing machine. Set your sewing machine to a qu quarter inch seam allowance. Again, we're going to sew on both sides of this line and it's just going to take me a second. Just a second to go ahead and do that. Y'all feel free to have a conversation. I asked a question earlier. Uh, this is the first time making a churn dash block for me. Is this your first time? You might have just joined since I asked that question. Oh, you know what I did? I got to go get some thread, y'all. <laughs> Goof up number one. I brought my thread over to the other sewing machine yesterday. I'll be right back. Have you made a churn dash block before? Yes or no? come to save the day with the thread. I knew there was something I was forgetting to do. All right, let me get this machine all threaded up. I knew there was something. One of these days, y'all, I'm going to do a live video and everything is going to go according to plan. 
and y'all are not going to even believe it, right? All right, let me pick up where I left off. I have not done a double wedding ring quilt yet. That looks like a lot of work. I'm going to be really honest. I tend to have quilters ADD, right? I get really excited about starting a project in a larger quilt and halfway through I lose total interest in it just like you'll see these uh, lattice square blocks up on my design wall behind me. They were so much fun to make. The first four were so much fun. The second four were so much fun. The third four felt like work and now I have not made any more since four days ago. Libby, thank you so much, y'all. Oh my goodness. I hope y'all know that's not why I'm coming live, <laughs> right? Y'all know that, right? Thank you so much, Miss Libby. Yes, I have quilters ADD. I lose interest halfway through quilt projects that take longer than four days. A wedding ring quilt looks like it would take longer than four days. <laughs> All right, we're just going back on the other side of this line, right in the middle of our blocks with a quarter inch seam. And we'll take that off the machine. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and take these pins out now. We have our four seams, one on each side of that middle diagonal line. I'm going to give this a quick press because I like to press this nice and flat before I cut these into our half square triangles. And that's just me. I think it's a little bit more accurate if it's nice and flat. So there we go. Here are our groups of four and seven eighths and four and seven eighths. Now we're going to take what stitch length do I use? Uh, it depends on the sewing machine. On my Singer Patchwork, to do a straight stitch, I like using a stitch length that is 2.5. On my Juki, it doesn't do a 2.5 stitch. It goes in groups of two, I think, if I remember correctly. So it's like 2.4 on my Juki. Now we can go ahead and cut these apart, right? We're going to cut right on that line that we drew together. So there's two half square triangles. I need a new blade. There we go. There's two half square triangles. And here are our other two. Right? Look how easy that was. Ta-da! Now I'm going to take these four half square triangles and I'm going to press them. I'm going to set the seam and then open it up and press that seam to the dark side. So that's going to take me just a second. In the meantime, 
Here's another question for everybody. If you've asked me questions, I've missed them and there's a lot of chatter, which I love. I hope you're having conversations with one another. Here's a question. What is your favorite quilting or sewing notion that you use almost on a daily basis? Something that is a must have in your quilting and sewing room. All right, I've just got one more, one more left to press. The seam ripper, I know the seam ripper from yesterday. <laughs> I do, I used it yesterday, that's for sure. So here is our half square triangles for our block. That was really simple, right? Now let's check the measurements of this. Nothing like putting yourself on the spot live, right? We should be four and a half by four and a half. Look at there, four and a half by four and a half. It should be the same size as the four and a half by four and a half inch square that we're gonna use for the middle. Yes. I did it. So let's go ahead and trim these dog ears because I don't like them being in my way. The iron. That's a good one. Rotary cutter. Yes. I don't think I'd like making quilts very much without a rotary cutter. We're just trimming off those dog ears real quick. So now we have our four half square triangles, just like that. If you don't like cutting that seven eighths, that four and seven eighths, cut your squares five by five and then trim and square up your half square triangles to four and a half inches. You could do that. So there's those units. So we have four half square triangles. We have our center unit four and a half by four and a half. Let's go ahead and chain piece these together. These are our two and a half by four and a half inch pieces. I'm just gonna put those right through the sewing machine, chain piece them, and then we'll have four units, four units from those. The fabric wants to stick together today. Who out there right this second is sewing their churn dash block at the same time as I am? Kit Kat. Y'all, I really wish that we could get together in person so I could give you a hug. <laughs> Thank you so much. I 
have not used the aqua quilt before. I have a brother scan and cut and applique is one of my favorite things to do in my quilts. Uh, I have friends who have the Accu quilt and they love it. All right, we got one more section to sew together. I'm so glad the live chat is working today. I hope it keeps up so that we have a chance to talk to one another during this live stream. That's one of the reasons why we're doing it, right? I was really sad yesterday when I realized that the live chat was not working. <laughs> I think the YouTubes is all boggled down with everyone being home. All right, so here are these four units. I'm going to take these over and give them a press and I'm going to press my seams to the dark side, right? To the dark side. Who's a slow presser like me? <laughs> I watch tutorials all the time, just like you do. And they just press so fast and they're like, duh, 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 here, 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 it's all done. <laughs> I am a slow presser. So here are these four units. Again, if you came in after I said this, you could assemble these units using strip sets that are cut two and a half inches wide and really long, and then cut your units to four and a half inches. That would work. So here's these pieces here. Let me get that churn dash block and make sure that I'm not switching anything around the wrong way. That would be helpful. So now we can start to put this block together. See how easy that piecing is for this block? We're gonna take our first half square triangle and put it right in the corner with the darker fabric as that corner, the lighter fabric towards the inside of the block. We're gonna take one of these units and place that right next to it with the darker fabric on the outside. Now you could totally reverse this and use your dark fabrics in place of my light. You could switch it around and that would look awesome too. There's no rules. Do what looks pretty to you. I'm going to put my darks on the outside for this block. Let's take a, another half square triangle and we're going to lay it just like this. We're going to put this solid four and a half by four and a half right in the middle. Let's take another one of these units and put it here. Another one of these units and place that here. Half square triangle. And a half square triangle. There is our turn dash block. Oh, I love it. This is my favorite one. Dawn, I, don't, I did not see what is happening with you, but just know that my heart is with you and I will go through the comments later and see what's going on and I'll be praying for, I'll be on it. So, Lisa, you can do this. Let's piece these rows together without swapping anything around today. It's going to be really easy piecing, y'all. 
We're going to take the second row and put it right down on the first row. Just like that. We're going to sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'll do that. Uh, here's my final question for today's live. When you are sewing blocks or planning a quilt or in your studio or quilting your quilts or binding your quilts, do you listen to music in the background or maybe audio books? What do, or do you like just silence? Go. third block. Now we're going to carefully bring this over once we've chain pieced our blocks together. My leader is up here up at the top. That's how I know that was block number one. <laughs> so now we can open this up and we're going to attach the third block. I'm gonna leave these connected for right this minute so they don't get all mixed up. And I'm going to turn the third block right over onto this second block. And I'm gonna chain piece the third block on each one of these rows. Oh yeah, the TV on, that's a good one too. All right, we're gonna bring in the second, third block. Right sides down, and so that one. And our third block, right sides down. And here we go. They're still all connected together from where we chain piece them. My leader is up here at the top. That's how I know that was the top of my block. <laughs> we can go ahead and separate the little threads that connect each one of these rows. I know some quilters who leave them on there and just keep on pressing with all their strings. For me, it's easier to separate the rows. And now we're going to press these rows. I like to press my seams to the side and nest my seams. You can press your seams open if you like. I'll press them left, right, and the left. And that's how, that's how I do it. So there's my first row. These seams I'm gonna press in that direction. And these seams will go in this direction. So 
So here are our rows. I love this block so much. So we're going to take this block and turn it right side up. This is where I messed up yesterday. I ended up sewing up here when I should have sewn down here. That's what I did. So let's turn up this block right on top of the top one. We're sewing at this seam right here, Lisa. Pay attention, Lisa. Our seams should nest. Yesterday they were not nesting and I kept right on sewing. They're nesting today. And I'm gonna sew this seam. Nesting up those seams as I go right along. I know you can't see my machine, I'm sorry. Take that off the machine. I'm not going to press it yet. So there's our first two rows. Let's go ahead and attach this bottom row right to the middle section. We're going to nest up those seams and get that seam done. And we are finishing up on this block. Y'all went out during our break. We're coming on live today a little bit later than we have been because uh, I had some work to do this morning and Harlan had a business meeting to do. And so we're a little bit later than we have been. And I went outside during that time and I was messing around out in the dirt. <laughs> I just realized that. Okay, here is our finished block. Let me give that a press really quick. And uh, looks like we're still going. Thank you. Today's been such a better day than yesterday. All right, for the big reveal. Oh, let me press it one more time. <laughs> there we go. Now it's the big reveal. I like to press from the pretty side one last time. There we go. All my blocks are going the right way. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Today has been so much better. Y'all were so nice and encouraging after my big goof up yesterday. I heard from so many people yesterday that they too were having a bad day yesterday. I hope your day is better today. Look at this block. I love it so much. I'm going to tell you, I had never done the churn dash block before. And now it is my most favorite quilt block. We'll see after making like 12 of them if I'm still really excited about them. But they go together really quick. So I can see you could knock out a quilt like this pretty quick. Right? Yes. 
Yes, I cannot wait to go back and read all of your conversations and your comments. If you have a question, now would be a great time to ask if you can put your questions in all caps. That would be helpful for me to catch it. If you just chit chatting and stuff, I will come back after the live and read all the conversation. I can't wait to do that. So this is the churn dash, my new favorite quilt block. Yes. Let me put up on the screen. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me put on the screen what you need in case you came in late and you want to sew this block. Are you using a certain fabric line? This is a, um, these fabrics today I got from my mom. She bought a layer cake. I think it was Moda and she was going to make some of the pot holders, the like uh, bowl cozies. And she made two and she hated doing it. So she gave me the fat, the layer cakes. So that's where this came from. Yesterday's block I made from some leftover neutral fabric from Happiness is Homemade and Goodwill shirts. So I'm just using whatever I come up with first. If it doesn't match, that's okay. I'm thinking that I'm going to put my quilt together as a sampler. Certainly, I do think if you coordinated all the colors in your fabrics, for all your blocks and it was all matchy that would be stunning i'm just gonna go random whatever i grab to do my blocks it just so happens that right now everything is coordinating together i might just use up her layer cake we'll see i don't know what size is the squares shelly uh this one is a oh sorry shirley I have bifocals. I still can't see that far away. This is a 12 inch block. They're all gonna be different. Tomorrow we're doing a 12 inch block. Sunday we're doing a six inch block. I have not planned beyond that. So, so far we've done two eight inch blocks. This makes our second 12 inch block. Tomorrow's is a 12 inch block and Sunday's is a six inch block. Yes, Kim, that could have been a new quilting design. Although I'm going to tell you, I rewatched that video. I wasn't really crazy about that layout. <laughs> I wasn't really crazy about it. But yes, you're right. I should take a picture of it just in case it turned out to be something really stunning. I could reduplicate it, right? I don't know, Anne Marie. Uh, I don't know how many blocks you'd be making. Um, I don't know how many blocks we're making in the series. We're winging it day by day as we get updated on this social distancing time and quarantine time, right? So we might end up making eight blocks. We might make 12. Y'all, I really hope that we're not making 20 blocks together. As much as I love you and this time together and making these blocks, I hope that we can return to normal life sooner than that. But if we make 20 blocks, we make 20 blocks. We're going to make the best out of it, right? It's not going to be forever. So, yes, there are the measurements for today. Now, <clears throat> if you're just joining the live, I'm going to do one thing before, before I show the blocks for tomorrow. Here are my two churn dash blocks side by side. They're not going to all fit in the screen. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yes, I love it. <clears throat> Pamela, uh, go to my YouTube channel. Okay, and you're going to scroll down, hun, and you're going to scroll down till like December-ish. 
I made some mug rugs for a friend of mine. And uh, at Christmas time, she gave me several articles of clothing from her dad and she wanted some mug rugs to be made from them. In that video, they're called Patchwork Mug Rugs from Clothing. I think that's what it is. In that video, in the very beginning of it, I show how I debone a button front shirt to get the most use of the fabric to incorporate that into your quilting. We're all different. There's several different ways to do it, but in that video, uh, I, I show the process and I cut apart a couple of shirts in that video. Yes, my new favorite. I'm gonna pull up on the screen though, tomorrow's block. I might change my mind after tomorrow. Let me show you what we're doing. All right, turn dash gone. Tomorrow we are making the double necktie. Here are your measurements and your piece counts for the double necktie block. And you'll see a little example picture on the screen right there. I really love the example picture purple and yellow. So I think I'm going to go through my stash and find some purple and yellow. It won't go with these blocks that I've already made. And I'm okay with that. If my sampler has all the colors of the rainbow in it, I'm okay with that. Some of us like to be more coordinated than that though. Yes, the double neck tie block will be a 12 inch block. It'll finish when you make it 12 and a half by 12 and a half. In your quilt, it finishes at 12 inches by 12 inches. I'm gonna leave this up on the screen for a little while so you can go find a pen and some paper and write that down. You're so right, Linda, we can always look back and remember the year that we made this quilt together. You might wanna take some of these blocks and make some table runners with it. I talked to someone yesterday who was gonna take one of these blocks and make a uh, little placemats out of them. You can do anything with these blocks. You don't even have to make a quilt out of them, right? Teresa, you sound so busy. Yes, if you do a 12 and a six inch block, uh, I was saying uh, last night, that if you take two 12 inch blocks and you put them side by side or one on top of the other, you could take three eight inch blocks and piece those together and that'll be the same size. You could take four six inch blocks and piece those together and that would all fit. So yes, where all the blocks will be divisible by two so if you want to put all of them together as like a sampler quilt, you could do that. You could also take the smaller blocks and put a little border around them to bring them all up to 12 inches. We're not going to make anything bigger than 12 inches. So if you want to do that, you could do that. Kim, that's smart. Do a screenshot. That's quick and easy. Dawn, you're gonna do the Paisley quilt, the Paisley art quilt, the little, the little one, or something different. So yes, this has been the churn dash. Thank you, Jesus. Everything went smooth. We've been able to chat the whole time. Today is a good day. I hope your day is going any four inch blocks. No. I'm not doing any four inch blocks. However, uh, at the end of this series, and I go to put this together as a sampler quilt, we might have to do some four inch blocks to fill in some spaces, depending on how we lay it out, right? You might have to use some filler four inch blocks 
If that's the case, you could do a solid four and a half inch block, or you could do little four patches that measure four inches when you're done. But I'm not making any traditional blocks with you as a tutorial, tutorial that will finish at four inches. The smallest will be six, and we're doing one of those on Sunday. Oh, the little art quilt. That was fun. It was real fun until I went live on Facebook and tried to do some quilting on that quilt. It was real fun until that point. <laughs> so yes, I can't wait to put these up on the design wall. I'm only going to put one of them. I'm going to put the green one that we made together on the design wall with my four other blocks. This one is going to go in the makings of a churn dash quilt. I'm going to make that into a quilt all on its own, all with the same block. Seed stitch. If you are looking to get started right now, you can go cut up some clothing and sew a churn dash block. Kitty, you've had a morning yesterday. I had a more yesterday I had a whole bad day. But today's a new day. I hope you're feeling better. Jill, it's so great to see you. We are almost done with today's live. But and it'll take a minute for the video to process. But when it does, come back on the replay because we make an awesome block today. It is my new favorite block. But I think it's going to have some competition because on this screen I'm showing you the double necktie block. Tomorrow we're going to be doing snowballs. Snowballs. The little tiny yellow triangle and the corners of those purple blocks. We're going to be snowballing tomorrow. That's going to be fun. And it looks really super duper complicated. You're going to be amazed at how easy it is. And your family is going to be like, whoa, you did all of that piecing. And you're going to be like, yes, I did. I have mad quilting skills. <laughs> it's so easy. You don't have to tell them it's going to be this easy. You never snowballed before. Well, tomorrow, Chantel, you're going to be snowballing. Or I'm going to be snowballing, and you can watch and see if you want to snowball or not, right? I'll be balling. <laughs> okay, y'all, I have so much enjoyed this time with you. Like I mentioned earlier, if you missed it, I've really grown to, even though I still get really lot, uh, nervous, uh, I wake up excited and really ready to do the live for the day and make the block with you. It's one of my favorite highlights of the day. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow. Um, everyone who did um, the super chat, y'all, I love you so much. Thank you. I feel, I actually feel guilty. I know I shouldn't. I know that comes from your heart, and I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Just know, everybody, everybody know, I'm just so thankful to spend, to spend some time with you. I would not be doing this if I didn't want to spend time with you, right? That is my main purpose for us to socialize and spend time doing something we all love. I'm hoping you learned something. Many of you have already made the churn dash block many times before. Thank you for staying anyway and just hanging out with me. Yes, it gives me something to us. It gives me something to look forward to as well. Vicki, you do not want to hear me sing. You do not want to hear me sing at all. 
Not at all. We are zooming today. Everything has been pushed back. See, right now it's already 159 where I am. Usually we zoom at two, but Harlan had a work meeting, so everything had to be pushed back. I'm going to take a few minutes and turn off all of the irons and the, the machine and all of that, get it all shut down, and then we'll be zooming on the creative crew group shortly. Thank y'all all so much. I'm so glad today went without a hitch, except for me leaving my thread on the Juki. I had to go get that. All right, y'all. Tomorrow, double necktie. I can't wait to see you then. If you want to uh, get a, like a notification of when that video starts so you can catch us live, make sure on my channel you've subscribed. And then the bell notification, when you click on it, make sure it says all. That way you'll get notified when I go live. If this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me. We don't normally do this type of video, but here we are. And uh, if you're watching this on the replay, you might be able to open the live chat box and see everybody's answers to the questions I asked today. That's a really neat function that YouTube does. And I would love to hear from you on the replay down in the comment section below. Bye everybody. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.